Hello watch enthusiasts. Now a great many watches have been released over the past month, and so as a result I'd like to talk about several very interesting pieces released from a great many different brands, from Nomos to Longines to Zin to Cartier, offering a great many different features and different styles, from everything from this rather beautiful Nomos you see on the screen, which pays homage to a particular art and design movement, all the way through to some of the most technologically advanced Omegas we've seen in a very long time. However, before I begin this video, I would like to invite you all to join me on the social media platform Snups at The Watch Guys. And this is a group set up specifically for you, my viewers, to discuss matters of horology with, with me and indeed other enthusiasts, as well as giving you the ability to, uh, to suggest new themes for videos, and also ask me any particular questions on certain topics. And therefore I really do feel that this is an excellent way of playing a greater role in the production of my videos, and will hopefully enhance your viewer experience. And it's certainly been brilliant to see almost 500 of you contributing on the, the, the group and joining um, to, to really help this, this community of, of like-minded watch lovers. Therefore, I would strongly encourage you to go and have a look at the, the group and uh, follow the link down below to join. Now, the first watch I'd like to talk about is a new version of the Nomos Orion, made specifically for, for Ace Jewelers. And this is uh, a limited edition of 100 pieces, which is uh, called the, 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 the Orion 38 100 Years to Style Limited Edition. And a style, and please do correct me in the comments down below if anyone does speak Dutch, by the way, because my pronunciation is, is no doubt appalling. Um, and this is, uh, it was an art movement in, uh, founded in 1917 in Leiden. And this focused on the abstraction of, of normal shapes and, and design, uh, with Mondrian being a very key contributor. Though this wasn't uh, set specifically for, for artists alone, this was also uh, a major movement for designers as well as even carpenters. And this focus on a great deal of, of rectangles and shapes of that form, and these can clearly be seen in the dial of this watch, with its very bizarre shaped indices. And though this, this highly asymmetrical dial with these, these unique uh, rectangles around the dial, of which none are, are identical, may well uh, give, um, uh, give Bauhaus lovers a, a minor nervous breakdown, I think it has a real charm in terms of creating a, a very different flair to Nomos, and a flair which is slightly different to their usual playful design, which veers away from Bauhaus in a lot of their, their more limited runs, but certainly in this case they really have stepped away from it without using colour, whilst they've kept a, a truly monochromatic style with blackened hands rather than the normal blued versions. We really have a, a beautiful watch which is truly minimal in, in, in I suppose, a, a joke on the Bauhaus design, but with these extremely, um, extremely different indices around the dial, which I think bring out a character which wasn't previously seen in the Orion range. And this watch is being made in a relatively limited run of 100 pieces, um, which I must say is something which, uh, which I, I, I respect when a great deal of, of limited editions made by brands are limited to, uh, to extremely high numbers, like 7,000, for instance, for the, the Spectre um, uh, Omegas. And so as a result, I, I do respect Nomos for making such a, a tight run of these watches, um, to make these watches truly special as far as individual timepieces go. And these watches are available from Ace Jewelers for €1,620 Euros plus VAT, um, and feature the manually wound alpha movement from Nomos. And this is a movement which can be clearly uh, seen through the exhibition case back on this watch, which is a, a nice feature, and I think one which, again, adds to the, um, the, the, the curiosity of this, of this watch, with the, the pure functionality of the movement, albeit decorated, where every part is exactly as one would expect to fit the, the mould it has to, 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 to fit in order to function correctly. But this contrasts very nicely the, the asymmetrical style to the dial, which shows a degree of, of, um, of, 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 of chaos, I suppose, which one would not, not normally see with the Nomos range, which I think is a very, very charming blend, and I think will appeal to a lot of buyers. Now, the next watch in this list is a watch amongst many pilots' watches released over the past month. But this is the one, one of the ones which I found most interesting, and it's the, it's the new Longines Avigation Big Eye. And it doesn't have a name really that lives up to the, the, the watch itself, which I think is a superb pilot's watch, pilot's chronograph in this case, housing Longines' semi-in-house uh, column wheel uh, automatic chronograph, which I'll talk about in just a second. But the design of this watch is excellent. At 41mm, I think they've chosen just the right diameter, with those very large pushers, which act almost as crown guards around the crown, um, as well as a, a crown which is recessed slightly into the case um, to, to allow it to, to sit more flush. And the dial of this watch is also very, very beautifully done, with a, a black base with these sunken uh, subdials in this asymmetrical arrangement um, with regards to their size, which I think works perfectly for this pilot's chronograph, which is designed to take inspiration from the Type 20 styles of pilot's watches we've seen previously. And it has really all the credentials of a classic pilot's watch with those, um, uh, those cut-off loomed numerals and those typical hands, which I think build a, a perfect image of a watch in this case. And I think one could almost look at this watch as a more dressy alternative to a Zin 356 or 358, 
with its uh, its typically um, a legible design for a pilot's watch, and with the functionality uh, of that uh, that L688 chronograph. Now, the one aspect of this watch which I think many people will um, will debate, I think, over, is the movement. And this is Longines uh, L688 caliber, which I personally am greatly in favour of, because I find it to be a very interesting movement. But the one di disadvantage of this movement is that it does render watches terribly thick with their diver with this chronograph having uh, a 16mm thickness. So I assume, due to the lack of, uh, of such great water resistance, this watch will have a lessened thickness. But nonetheless, uh, one can assume that the thickness of this watch will be quite considerable. But the movement itself I find very interesting because it's an automatic chronograph based on the Velger 7750. And this is a movement made by Velger themselves rather than, than Longines, but it has been designed specifically for Longines and only for their use which is an area where I think this movement differentiates itself. And they've chosen not to include the date on this watch, which I think was an excellent move and, and declutters the dial a bit, as well as offering uh, one to enjoy the, the beauty of the chronograph function alone on the dial, um, which of course is, is made all the, all the better by the fact this is a proper column wheel chronograph rather than a cam-operated one, uh, which in my eyes uh, does add a great deal of, um, of value to this timepiece as far as chronographs go. I think the crowning glory, though, of this watch is the pricing, which I think is absolutely incredible considering the features offered. And this comes in at less than the, the Heritage Diver 1968, and comes in at £1,940, which for a chronograph like this I think offers incredible value and really does compete with uh, watches from Tudor and Omega in terms of offering a great deal to the buyer. And of course it's presented in this, this truly beautiful, um, or rather on this truly beautiful calf leather strap, which I think matches the watch extremely well with that stainless steel case, which is unapologetically classic in its design, and, and is truly a watch which I think will, um, will gain a great deal of, of popularity, because it, it truly is a beautiful piece to look at, and no doubt knowing Longines will be very ergonomic on the wrist. Now the third watch in this list is the new Zin EZM 1.1, and this takes inspiration from the original long discontinued EZM 1, which was a watch which started their, their Eisenzatzen Messer line, or their, their Mission Timer line, which is a line of watches made by Zinn, which, uh, which has really uh, epitomised the brand and what they, they, they try to produce, as far as professional, uh, as professional sports watches go, which truly can resist any environment that's, uh, that's, that they're thrown at, um, and which, uh, uh, which do have that typical Zinn attention to detail in terms of producing a watch which, which really is as, as rugged and as, as elegant for its, its, its purpose as, as can be possible. And this watch features a wonderful chronograph setup, which is very similar to the original, which originally used the Lamania 5100. Now, as, as a result of this movement no longer being produced or being available, they use their SZ01 movement in this watch, which is based on the Velger 7750, but in this case uh, gives a, a different layout, whereby all of the, uh, the registers are presented on the central, central axis of the dial. So one has the, the, uh, the chronograph second hands and then the chronograph uh, minute hand underneath that, which allow the, the chronograph to be more legible at a glance and declutters the dial quite significantly. And this does mean one doesn't have a running second uh, timer on this watch, but I feel that's a small price to pay for such a clear and legible layout. And the differences between this and the original also don't end there, because the movement has also been modified to give jumping uh, minute uh, indication on the chronograph. And this means that the, this, the, the minute indicator, or the minute hand, will sit on the, indis, uh, on the index it's, it's pointing to, and then jump to the next one rather than being a continuous flow, which makes it more legible to glance to the user. And of course this watch does incorporate um, the, the ARD humidifying technology that Zinn uh, Zin uses, which is something that's become a real staple of their EZM line. Furthermore, this case is slightly different to the original in that it's significantly larger. When the original was 40mm, this is now 43mm, um, and also is also extremely thick at 16.5mm thick. That said, though, one does need that thickness to accommodate the movement, and of course this is also 200 meters water resistant, despite being a pilot's watch. Also, gone is the old titanium case, and now the case is made out of, of tegumented submarine steel, which is extremely corrosion resistant and very shock resistant, as well as being very scratch resistant due to that, um, uh, that uh, treatment of uh, tegumenting. And so as a result, it does offer different, uh, different uh, qualities in the original, and only weighs 105 grams though on the strap, which is still remarkably light even for a steel watch. One other interesting detail about this watch is the fact that uh, on the dial, everything that isn't essential to tell the time is painted in red, rather than the, the white of the, the timekeeping aspects, which of course makes the watch far, far more legible to glance, which is the real objective of this, of this watch as a pilot's timepiece. Also, this, uh, this red does denote the fact that this has uh, ARD humidifying technology, whereby the case is filled with argon, 
and uh, and a, a copper sulfate capsule is, is installed in the case to absorb uh, any moisture within the watch. And this prevents the fogging up of the crystal and also any damage to the movement from uh, from continued exposure to moisture, which would normally occur with 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 a, with, with a watch, and which can't really be can't be uh, allowed in a watch like this, which is designed specifically for a professional who needs to rely on their watch very very crucially. And so as a result, uh, one has to ensure the the maximum legibility through not having that that fogging up of the crystal, and also the the maximum reliability which this guarantees. Now, really, the only aspect of this watch that I'm not keen on is the price. And in my eyes, the price of this watch, though a limited edition, is frankly eye-watering. The price of this watch is £4,525, which does strike me as a, an incredibly high price for this watch, considering that Zinn produced models with a very similar movement, but with two sub-registers, um, which include a running seconds and also an hour totalizer. So effectively the same, uh, the same layout, except for the fact that it adds two features to the dial, for about £1,000 less than that which does make me question, really, the, the, the value of this watch. Though, of course, for a collector, this is going to be a very interesting piece to own. I must say, I think it does deviate, rather, from the, the idea of the brand, because here they have gone away from making the best value watch, um, and have rather produced a watch which, uh, which is more of a collector's item instead. Now, the next watch I'd like to talk about, and indeed the final pilot's watch in this list, is one of two World Timer watches released this month, the second I'll talk about, uh, about, about in a moment. But this is the new Oris Big Crown Pro Pilot World Timer, and this is a, a spin-off from their 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 Pro Pilot range of these professional modern style pilots watches, with the same legible features of a classical watch, but with uh, with the design brought up to date. And I must say I rather like this new watch, though I feel the name World Timer is a bit misleading, because I wouldn't categorise this watch as a World Timer because it doesn't have the ability to line up the the time with various cities around the world, but rather gives you two time zones. The first time zone controlled from the crown uh, entirely is that smaller uh, sub-register at the 3 o'clock position with the date cut into it, and then the, 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 the other time zone being the, the second quickly adjustable time zone is controlled by the bezel, which is that central, uh, central timing section. And I feel this is an interesting concept because it makes a watch which is very useful when one's popping between time zones and wants to keep a home time as well as a, um, a current time. Um, so I do see this watch as being quite an interesting piece as far as um, as far as pilots watches go, while taking a, a complication which is usually seen in more, more dress orientated watches, but then seen in a in a very uh, sporty package in the case of this timepiece. Now, as ever with with Oris watches, this is a very very nicely decorated uh, case and and dial as well, with with a beautiful uh, style of uh, of beveling along the edge of the lugs, and a, a very simple but very elegantly done brushing all over the case. And I think this does lend to a, a very simple watch, which actually does exactly what it, uh, it's trying to do in terms of conveying a modern uh, style of aesthetics extremely well. And this is further seen through the, the knurlings on the crown and the, the bezel, which match very, very nicely, to show a, a sort of a, a, an aviation style to this watch. And this is further echoed on the dial with this black uh, matte black base with loomed numerals going around the dial, and these modern hands, which are, are both quite simple but extremely legible. Um, which are seen on every part of the dial, along with the, um, the, the the second hand as well in yellow, which again helps the legibility of the piece. And I think they've they've converted this watch to have a more complicated dial extremely well from their past knowledge of making a chronograph and uh, an altimeter version of this timepiece. Now the sizing of the watch is quite large at 44.7 millimeters, but that said, it does have a relatively short lug to lug distance by comparison to the case size due to those those relatively stubby lugs. But similarly, the, the case is designed to be this large, and I think any smaller wouldn't be legible due to the, the, com the complications on the dial, as well as the fact that the watch itself is a pilot's watch, and so as a result has to be large to be, to be legible in the cockpit. And the, the watch itself also features an interesting movement, which is a, a modified ETA 2836-2. So this is a normal movement, but has a, a dual time module placed on the top. And uh, this is a cert certainly an interesting piece, because now the, the, that dual time function is controlled by the bezel, which normally would make a watch uh, very uh, susceptible to water ingress, but in this case the watch is still water resistant to 100 metres, which I think is very impressive considering uh, what Oris do in terms of sports watches, which does make this watch a very uh, a reasonable competitor to some of the offerings from Zinn, for instance, um, as far as pilot's watches go. And I would even consider this watch a competitor to something like a, um, uh, like a, a Tudor North Flag, for instance, because this watch doesn't have the in-house movement, and is a very different style of watch from a field watch to a pilot's watch, but I feel offers the same crisp modern legibility, with interesting features built in. Now the pricing of this watch is quite high, between $3,600 and $3,850, depending on the model you go for, but there are two versions coming on a variety of different straps and bracelets, 
There's the black dial version with the uh, the yellow detailing on on the various uh, sections of the dial, the, the day-night indicator, and the, the second hand. And this also has a fully brushed case. But there is also one with an anthracite sunburst dial, which is an attractive and more dressy option for this watch, with a polished bezel instead. Um, and this one doesn't feature any uh, any extra colouring, it's purely anthracite and, uh, and white on the dial, which I think does make for a more simple and subdued look, um, though my personal choice would be the black dial version with the extra bit of colour. Now the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra has become really the cornerstone in my eyes of the Seamaster range, because it's a, it's a watch which suits the vast majority of people who don't want a, a pointed dive watch, or indeed a, a dress watch with lesser capabilities. And so as a result, the, the Aquaterra has become a major part of Omega's lineup and is uh, one of their best-selling models, really. And they've decided to update it uh, following its 15th anniversary. And so as a result, uh, they've released uh, several new models and an entire new range with over 60 different variations. Um, though the version I'd like to talk about primarily today is the new um, World Timer model. I'll brush over the rest of the range to give you an idea of the changes. And the women's line have a 28, a 34, and a 38mm version, um, with the 28 having a quartz movement. And they feature the, uh, uh, the 8800 calibre of movement. And this is really a, a spin-off of the new Master Coaxial um, chronometer movements by Omega, but in this case feature a slightly smaller power reserve due to being a smaller movement, and also don't feature the, uh, the, the jumping hour hand seen on the 8900 range, which is incidentally now fitted to the, uh, the 38 and 41mm men's versions, which features really everything we've seen previously in, in Omega uh, Master Coaxial chronometer movements with the, the long power reserve, the, the jumping hour hand um, to set the date, and also the, uh, the, the very impressive anti-magnetism. However, one unique model has been added to the range, and this is the new 43mm Omega Seamaster Aquaterra Platinum World Timer. And this is the new uh, larger counterpart, and the top of the line really, in terms of the, the Aquaterra range, and does offer, I think, quite an interesting package, because it's a piece which, if it were produced in steel, for instance, I think would sell extraordinarily well. But in this case, in platinum at 43mm, it still retains the 150m water resistance of the original, and features now a, a unique dial with that uh, wonderful enamel style in the centre of the dial, which uh, depicts the world from the, the northern, uh, or rather the no northern hemisphere of the world. And the hands and, and also the indices are also gold, with those, those world time uh, rings going around the dial. And of course you can, uh, you can adjust the world time function, which is a true world time in this case. And the calibre used is the new 8939 uh, silicon, um, uh, silicon uh, balance wheel and uh, silicon spring coaxial master chronometer movement, except now with that, that, that beautiful world time addition to the dial. And of course this does make the watch slightly larger, and as a result the whole case has grown by 2mm. But I think that's a small price to pay for the, the, the curiosity, really, of having such an interesting timepiece. Of course the styling is carried across the entire range of Aquaterras now, and I feel there are some very attractive changes. The dials are slightly changed to, to give them a certain more delicate uh, style, as well as the fact that one now has a, a new range of straps as well, um, though the World Timer does come on this very attractive uh, alligator uh, leather strap, which I think matches the case extremely well. And of course they feature the, the classic twisted lugs these watches have, and the slightly changed crown now, uh, with a slight flare, which, which I think actually works extremely well with the styling of the case, and is, is seen now on the, on the new Railmaster as well. And the detailing on these watches really is beautiful, whether one looks at the bottom of the range models, or indeed at the very high-end um, uh, World Timer model in this case. For example, the crown lines up perfectly when one screws it in, and, uh, and also the, the, the polishing and brushing on the case really is excellent, along with the decoration on the movement. Which is an area where I think Omega really have done a good job, because it offers someone who wants uh, perhaps a, a single watch in their collection, or simply a slightly different and simple watch in their collection, uh, an option as far as a good value watch goes, which does offer features which compete extremely well with the, the likes of Rolex, for instance, and in my eyes do make these watches, uh, to most, a very attractive option, and perhaps an even better option than, for example, a Rolex Datejust for equivalent money. Now, normally in these videos I would stop after, uh, after five different, uh, different new releases this month, but this month there's a sixth which I think holds just as much importance as the, the five that I've already talked about, and this is the 100th anniversary of the Cartier Tank, and so as a result, Cartier have produced a range of watches specifically to commemorate this, this, this anniversary of probably their most popular model, or at least their most iconic, in my eyes, model. And they've released three new ranges, or at least three variations on three new ranges. And they've released the first of which, which is in this case the Tank Saint-Centré. And this is a model which has been around for a very long time in terms of the design, but now is seen in a new style with a new movement, the 9917MC, which is made specifically for this watch. 
And this is an elongated style of, of tank with the 46.3mm by 23mm elongated case, which curves over the top of the wrist to make it more comfortable. And really this represents the top end of the Katia range in terms of pricing, because this is a watch which comes in at €70,000 in its platinum configuration, and is also available in, in, uh, in gold alternatively at a lesser price. And there will be a hundred pieces of each to commemorate this anniversary. And of course this is a piece which is, is really a collector's item at this price point. But I can see why they went for this, this very uh, extravagant style with this watch, considering they'd already put a great deal of, of time and work into configuring the, the movement in the correct uh, manner to fit this case, and also for that, that uh, minute track to suitably work as, as, a, as the bridges for the movement which is a very clever move on, on their part, and I think has, has paid off extremely well in the case of this skeleton-style watch, which in my eyes represents all the elegance of the Gatia tank, but will, with that, uh, that slight um, uh, air of, of innovation and technology which Gatia put into their watches. Now what I like most about this watch is the fact that Gatia have made an effort to not overcomplicate this piece, and make it uh, move away and deviate from the standards of the Gatia tank notably the cabochon on the crown, the sapphire, as well as those beautifully blued hands and the absence of a second hand, which removes a great deal of clutter from the dial. Now the second special edition they've released is a new version of the Tank Américaine, and this has simply been called the 2017 model. And this is a piece which is quite important really in the history of the Tank Américaine, which is this stretch style of tank, because unlike the, the Tank Française and, and the Anglaise, this is the only one of the three that has never been released in non-precious metals before, that's to say in steel. And this is the first time the watch is, is available in steel. And this watch is, again, an attractive piece and has again followed in the, the footsteps of the tank and the, the tank uh, américaine in this case, which is very similar to the, um, the elongated style of the saint -Tré. And in fact, in many cases, the two are, are confused um, in terms of their, their, their place in the history of the watch. But certainly this is a piece which, uh, which I think represents Cartier in a, more, a much more pure way than indeed the, uh, the, 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 the ultra-complicated and uh, highly decorated saint -Tré. But in this case we see a steel case which is nicely, uh, very nicely brushed in its central sections and polished, with that, um, that faceted crown with again a faceted cabochon, and then a very simple dial which follows the, the lines of the original. Now, in many ways, this watch appeals to a very similar audience uh, to the, the sort of person who's going to buy, for example, a JLC Master Control, one of the new models, which I personally find absolutely beautiful. Because with its, its understated blue crocodile leather strap and very simple silver colouring, it's a watch which is very understated, whilst to the person who knows, is quite a wonderful watch to, to own. And they come with, uh, with, with three sizes with this watch. So there's a 348 by 19 mm size, which is the, the ladies' size, and is the version which uh, features the quartz movement and no second hand. Then one has the 416 by 226 mm version, which is the smaller or mid-size version with an automatic in-house movement. Topping off the range, we have a 45.1 by 26.6 mm version, which is the full-size men's model, and in my opinion, probably is the one that's going to fit wrists the best. And this also features the same automatic movement with the second hand as the mid-size model. And the pricings reflect this, with the quartz version being $4,000, um, the, uh, the, the mid-size version $5,100 and uh, the larger one $5,750. So the prices do, do, raise, do uh, uh, increase incrementally, and I must say, considering the movements involved in these watches, if I were uh, uh, considering the ladies' option, I really would be inclined to select the mid-size instead, because I do feel that it offers more in terms of movements and in terms of watch, uh, considering the, the, the relatively small price increase um, from $4,000 to $5,100. And so I do feel as far as special editions, this one will sell the best, uh, being the most uh, consumer orientated, and also being the, uh, the most versatile in terms of uh, styling for the vast majority of wrists. Now price between nine and $12,000 come the last two watches I'd like to talk about, which are the two new models of the, the Tank Louis Cartier 2017. And these are watches uh, based on the most simple of Cartier Tank designs, and in my opinion are the most attractive. And they, they, they're now producing two versions in, uh, in pink gold, and these versions come in a smaller size of 29.5mm by 22mm, or a larger size of 33.7 by 25.5mm, which is incidentally very close to the original size of the watch, albeit slightly larger. And this watch, in my opinion, is, is very, very interesting, because it's a piece which does represent Gatti's uh, high-end dress watch, and competes directly with watches such as the Rolex Cellini line. 
And I think Gachi put up a very, very good fight with this watch, because it features their in-house uh, manually wound 8971MC manual movement, which is something which they didn't really have to do with this watch, but I think they did a very good uh, job of adding it in, because it does add to the, the historical aspect of this watch, and the, the general appeal of the timepiece. In terms of dials, these are very, very simple, with a, a Guerchier style to the centre of the dial, and then a simple sunburst around the rest, with those typical Roman numerals with Cartier integrated into them. And this is available in both of those sizes, in the pink gold, and then also is available in the same sizes, um, in uh, diamond encrusted, uh, either pink gold or white gold. Though I, I must say I tend to not go in for watches uh, with diamonds on them, simply because I don't find them particularly attractive, but they are an option for two or three times the price of these watches. Anyway, I'll conclude the video here, but thank you very much for watching, and please do like, share, and subscribe to help the channel, and to enjoy more content here in future. Also, do please leave your comments down below as to what you think of, of the watches in this video, and also uh, if there are any watches you think I, I, I ought to have talked about instead of these. So thank you very much for watching, this is Arm on the Watch Guy, over and out.